I am yours, I am yours, I am yours, send me Lord. I Welcome to the Gospel Center Pro Life Podcast. In this episode, we're going to talk about words. The words that we use when we're talking to an abortion minded mom, the words that we use when we're talking about abortion. We believe the words in this podcast will be a blessing to you, so stay tuned. I felt your passion, touched your heart. Guys, welcome to the Gospel Center Pro Life Podcast. Appreciate you guys joining us. Appreciate all you guys who share this podcast. We encourage you to do that. We're going to talk today about words mm-hmm. and that words mean something. And of course, in particular, when we're dealing with the issue of abortion, the language that we use, the words that we use can have an impact, mm-hmm. a good, positive impact or a bad, negative impact. Right. And we well know, if you've been in this uh, area of ministry for any time, you who are listening, you well know that the, quote, Mm pro-choice movement knows this as well, right? In their language with Planned Parenthood and and the abortion industry in general, Mm -hmm. they craft language in such a way that makes it seem like abortion is just health care. As a matter of fact, they say that. Abortion is health care is one of the things that they use. Reproductive health care. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that. But Mm -hmm. we're also going to talk about how we... As um, as ministers of the gospel, but as pro-life ministers as well, ministers of life, um, the language that we use and mm-hmm. how that language can be um, received or even rejected mm-hmm. by those that we're trying to reach uh, because of the words that we use. Right. Right. We need to be very careful with words. While we were thinking about doing this podcast and this, this subject, I was in an extended uh, text exchange with a mother who was on the fence between choosing life or aborting her child. Yeah. And I was very conscious of the words I was using. And after a while, she kind of went silent, which is usually not a good sign. And then uh, a couple of days later, I wrote to her offering help again, and she responded, the pregnancy is terminated. Yeah. And it really struck me. I wanted to write back, do you mean that your baby is dead, that you have killed your baby? I wouldn't have, and I didn't, but that is what happened. But the yeah. the words that she used made it seem like, you know, the, a job is terminated or, yeah. or you know, the, the dishes are done. Yeah. The, the pregnancy is terminated. It was such a cold and sterile sort yeah. of well, it, It's word the language use. of the abortion industry. It is. Yeah. And that's intentional. The abortion yeah. industry knows that the more terminology and words that they would use that would humanize that baby, right. the less likely women are going to be to come to them and, and have abortions, pay for their you know, health care, yeah. uh, reproductive services. Yeah. Which, yeah. You know, I mean, come on. I'm not going to rabbit trail on this, right? but reproductive health care... Abortion right. is exactly the opposite of reproduction. Reproduction, the word reproduce, mm-hmm. implies that mm-hmm. you're that something else is being <laughs> created, Produced, something else correct. is being produced. <laughs> yes. Um, and that's exactly the opposite. Right. That which has already been produced by the ha- by the hand of God, yeah. and through the act of intercourse, <laughs> that yeah. baby is being killed. Yeah. It's not reproduction. That's the opposite. Anyway. Yeah. So. And health. Well, yeah. health is usually that you're saving and enhancing someone's life, not taking life. But yeah. So I went through some of the words that are prominent mm-hmm. in the abortion movement. So, so one of the words, abortion. Let's yeah. talk about that. Okay. Abortion itself, the word abortion. What's an abortion? I mean, most people outside of who are doing abortions, really, it's not a word you use, abortion. And, and it, it, it in and of itself sanitizes what is a horrific, violent, either poisoning or dismemberment, dismemberment death of an unborn child. Yeah. But so the word itself, abortion, distances the mother and everybody from the truth of what is actually yeah, happening. yeah, or even that term termination of a pregnancy, you know? right? Yeah, you know, when you think about the word abortion, I mean, if you go to its root, you know, of course, the word is abort, right? Mm-hmm. And it's 
stopping a process. Right. A process that's in place, it's stopping that process. Now, the process, of course, in this situation, is pregnancy. Right. And that's another word. You know, people in the abortion industry, Planned Parenthood, they use the word pregnancy to apply to the baby. Yeah. We're going to take care of your pregnancy. Right. We're going to remove the pregnancy. Right. Well, Pregnancy is not a thing. I actually say this this often yes. as I'm talking to women at the abortion center or talking to men and say, a pregnancy is not a thing. It's a process. Mm-hmm. And abortion stops that process of pregnancy. Yeah. But, you know, if you think about it, when you're th- thinking about the word abortion, there are actually two ways to abort a pregnancy. Mm-hmm. You, you can kill your child in the womb, mm-hmm. dismemberment or a medical abortion, mm-hmm. or you can deliver your baby. Mm-hmm. I mean, delivery of a child, your child being born, mm-hmm. terminates the pregnancy. Mm-hmm. It does. That's right. So <laughs> it's not abortion, but to, to termination of pregnancy yeah. is what you're saying. And one, yeah. one very positive and one very horrific. Yeah. How about just the word clinic? Yeah. Abortion clinic. Uh-huh. So what does clinic say to us? Well, it, it seems helpful. It seems right. like it's there to meet our needs, yeah. medical needs, yeah. and that sort of With thing. doctors who mm-hmm. are there to improve life, yeah. not well, death. So this is something I mentioned to you before we started this podcast, yeah. but you know, some of the language that we use, because mm-hmm. there is a, a lingo, I guess, mm-hmm. associated with, with any, I guess, niche or whatever. I don't right. know what word to use right. there. Yeah, And we have a lingo on the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. And within our circles, we refer to the abortion clinics as abortion mills. Mm-hmm. That's an abortion mill. And why do we do that? It's because they produce abortions. They, and mm-hmm. they do it without real, you know, you think of a mill, you think of they just produce a product mm-hmm. without really regard to, to anything but right. just producing that product. And that's what abortion yeah. clinics, especially yeah. the one mm-hmm. uh, not far from here on La Trobe Drive, when they're doing, we just came from there. Today, 47, more than Probably more. Probably Probably more more than 47. In one day. Abortions, yeah, Yeah, in one day. Yeah, That's an abortion mill. So it's a a factory. It's a factory of baby death. Producing abortions, killing children. Yeah, right. So we refer to it in our circles as an abortion mill. Yeah. Now, when I'm sharing, though, publicly on social media, if I go share at a church or something Mm -hmm. like that, people who aren't in this realm that I want to bring into this realm, like Mm -hmm. I want them to come into this ministry, I want them to see the validity of this ministry and the necessity of this ministry, I don't use the term abortion mill. Right. I actually will use the term abortion clinic or abortion center. Yeah. Now, I I do try to steer clear of abortion clinic so much because I don't want to validate it because it's not a clinic because when you think of clinic, you think of health care and and, and really helping people and doctors that actually do good things. Yeah. Um, But I I, I do that and I use that terminology and I steer clear of abortion mill. So that people aren't, you know, just wondering, what are you even talking about? You know, you're speaking your lingo, and yeah. they don't really understand what you're talking about. Yeah. Right? So just to avoid all that, I just use abortion center. Right. Or abortion clinic. But I might talk about it being an abortion mill and then explain that. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's important for us, if we're going to use terms that people don't normally connect with, that we take time to explain those terms. You know, because terms in, in, in big words sometimes can make people pause and think about that. Right. But I think it's up to us sometimes to explain those words. So, mm-hmm. for example, if I'm at the abortion mill and I'm calling out to a mom who obviously doesn't know the Lord, I want to share the gospel, right? I want her to know the Lord, and I'm going to talk about repentance, and I'm going to talk about sin, and I will use the word fornication. <laughs> I yeah. will talk about yeah. sex outside of marriage. And Which I'll say, no one uses anymore. I mean, right, it's right. a biblical word, and we just don't hear it much. Yeah, any. It's yeah. not a popular word sure. for sure. Yeah, and I do that actually intentionally, right. because I think that it, it it's, maybe for some people it's a archaic word or yeah, whatever, Yeah. but I do it, and then I explain it. So right. I'll say something like, you know, the Bible says that fornication is sin in the sight of God, and yeah. I'll say fornication is sex outside of marriage. Right. So then right. I'm bringing a word into the equation yeah. to help them to think about it, yeah. and then I'm explaining that word. Because if I just say, I say fornication is wrong, yeah. or I just say repent. So if I use the word repent, which we should, it's a biblical word, yeah. I will say, so you need to repent. That yeah. means you need to turn away from your sin and turn to the Lord. Right, so I say, right. Say things yeah. like that. Yeah, and I think that word has kind of a 
a bit of a shock value because it's just so acceptable in yeah. today's society that everybody does it. Everybody has sex outside of marriage. So, yeah. But if you apply a word that clearly God meant it in a negative way, yeah, then absolutely. I think it, and most people have read the Bible, at least here in this area, and they, they might look at it a little bit differently. Yeah. yeah. How about just the word pill? Yeah. That it's an abortion pill. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of when you think of pill? Yeah, you know, you think of, I think, a, kind of a quick fix yeah. to your situation. You know, you got a headache, hey, yeah. you take, take a, a pill. headache pill. But it's a life-saving, right? Yeah, it, 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 rem it relieves undesirable symptoms, mm -hmm. and, and, it, and in some cases it saves lives. We take yeah. pills, medicine, whatever they want, a coronavirus medicine pill, yeah. something that will, yeah. that will end this, this pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, and then, of course, again, it speaks of health care and, and, and mm -hmm. a helpful thing right. most of the time. Yeah. But, of course, in this case, right. we're not really talking about, as far as the abortion pill is concerned, it's really not an abortion pill. It's actually an abortion pill regimen, mm -hmm. right? They give right. two medications. Yeah. Yeah. And I do take time to explain that. You know, we have in our brochure that we hand out to people going into the abortion center, it, the abortion pill procedure, and it describes it and how it works. Yeah. Because, again, it's not, and I'll say that on, on the microphone sometimes, I'll say that, you know, this is not just a magic pill that you take, your baby disappears, you can go on with your right, life. Right, right. But it's also an act of violence. Yeah. And the medication that you take is going to kill your child. Mm -hmm. And then the second medication that they give you to take at home, you're going to deliver your dead baby mm -hmm. in the toilet. And pretty violently, bathtub. with yeah. pretty violent contractions. Yeah, if, if anyone who's out there listening, you've seen the unplanned right. movie, yeah. and it really graphically shows mm -hmm. how an abortion pill procedure is carried through, Yeah, that is the reality of it. Yeah, yeah. So that word pill makes it yeah, seem it's, it's like it's easy, it. and it's, yeah. yeah, it's no big deal. Yeah, I'm and, just going to take this pill. You know, right. I'm just taking the pill. It's right. not a big deal. Yeah. And yeah, it sanitizes it. Yeah, Cleans exactly. it up, makes it seem like something that's not as bad as it actually is. Yeah. Even the word pro-choice, we've talked course, about that, yeah. the word pro-choice. Pro it's a pro, it, where really what they're saying is is we see very clearly that they're not supportive of the choice for life. They right, do yeah. everything in their power to prevent yeah. the moms from choosing life in, in that, um, at least in that parking lot and where we're standing on the sidewalk. So it's really, it's a choice for the murder of an innocent unborn yeah. baby. But you never hear that. No. They don't of say not. that. No. You know, one of the things I've said to, you know, pro choice people and to, you know, the moms going into the abortion center when I think it's appropriate. Yeah. Is the word choice, you know, you're here because you want to exercise your right of choice and your mm -hmm. right to choose. The word, the word choice itself implies the availability of more than one option. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. only have one option, you don't have choice. Yeah. Yeah. And in an abortion center, in an abortion clinic, clinic in an abortion mill, yeah. <laughs> they're not offering other options. Right. I mean, they're not laying out a brochure and says, okay, you can choose adoption, you mm -hmm. can choose to parent your child, or you can mm -hmm. choose abortion. They're not doing that. Right. And, you know, you wouldn't expect them to, right? Because yeah. they make money off they're of killing children. That it, that, right. Yes. Yeah. And so choice implies the availability of more than one option, but we all know when people say they're pro-choice, what are they talking about? Yeah, they're talking exactly. about abortion. abortion. They're, they're pro-abortion, pro right? Right. And that's the reality of it. And yeah. of course, they claim that we're just pro-birth. Yeah. I mean, I'm fine with that term. I'm pro-birth. Yeah, yeah I'm, I am. I'm, I'm pro. I'm glad yeah. you were born, Vicky. I'm glad yeah. I was born. I'm exactly. even glad those those pro-abortion people were yeah. born. You know. They but we're pro you pro you living beyond birth too. Of <laughs> course is, we are. Yeah. I mean, that's that's all just a bunch yeah. of so, baloney. So many of the people that accompany. The abortion patients. I don't actually. That's another one. Patient. Yeah. Patient. Well, they're not patients. Their clients may be clients that you know contributing to the murder of their own child, but they're really not yeah. patients. Yeah. Patients are someone who have some sort of a disease right. that needs help clearing it up. Mm -hmm. And pregnancy is not a disease. Yeah. It is a normal process. Yeah, I actually had somebody on Facebook, I think I might have put a quote out, or not a quote, but a, a post out there on Facebook, on our public Facebook page, sharing how many abortion patients were in there. 
And, you know, I use that word because people know what you're talking about. And they right. corrected me and said, these are not patients. These are aborting right. moms. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, you know what? Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And so moving forward, I'm kind of yeah. doing the best I can because that's what these are aborting moms. They're, they're, their mothers they're aborting their children. people that are here to kill their children. Yeah. So the people that come that accompany them are called support people. Support people. Support yeah. people. And in fact, I love this. The, you said this, uh, I believe it was last week, and I, I just loved it. And it's so perfect for what we're discussing now, where one of the support people said, y- you were eloquently speaking to him about he needed to go in there and help this woman to make a godly choice and to preserve that baby and to really help that woman because abortion is so devastating to yeah. to women as well. And the man said, "Look, I'm I'm not the father. I'm just here for moral support. Yeah. Moral support. Think about that." And which you pointed out so wonderfully. Well, you know, if you're here for moral support, there has to be something moral that you're supporting. Yeah. And the death of an innocent human being through brutal violent means it's not moral. Yeah. It's, it's anyone's, actually immoral. It's very immoral. Yeah. I think that's what you said to him. This is an so, immoral support is, yeah. is basically. So the word, though, the word that even these people that accompany the women, trying to make them feel it's okay for them to be there right. in whatever capacity. You're, you're a support person. And you're there support. you are. You that's know, a positive yeah, word. it's a positive thing. You're holding them up in their time of need. But really what they are? They're an accessory. Yeah. They're an accessory to murder. And God will call them to account yeah. for their part in, in that. I had a mom last week, actually, who she chose life. And one of her relatives was aborting. And she was paying for it. Wow. And yeah. she knew wow. that it was wrong. And, and so she, she still was had, there. She had chosen life she for her baby. Life. But she was coming to support that, another lady well, and having an abortion. They, they came together. Uh-huh. And, and one of them stopped to talk to me okay. and chose life. And while we're counseling her, the nurse comes to get the payment for the relative who was aborting. And we did our best to try and talk this mom who chose life out of being an accessory to murder. And she kept saying, I'm just, I, I can't, I, I have to support my sister. Yeah. So that word support, that it's considered support when really, what are you doing? You're helping someone to murder a baby. Yeah. And words you know, matter. I, I think a good analogy or something that people can connect with, and I, I use it oftentimes if I'm talking to a support person who's right. just there to support their friend. Right. I'll say something like, well, if they were at the bar and yeah. had a little too much to drink and they got their keys in their hand and they're walking toward the door mm-hmm. to get in their car and drive down the road, would you support them? Yeah. Because if you didn't do something to stop them, if you just ignored that, mm-hmm. or if you hopped in the car with them, right, and someone got killed, you would be an accessory. Right. You could be tried and yes. you could be convicted yeah. for not helping your friend do the right thing. Yeah, you're culpable. You know, or, you know, if your friend told you, hey, I want to go rob this bank. Would you ride along with me? Right. If you hop in the car with them, you might not do any of the robbing. Mm-hmm. You might be... a you might even be opposed to it. You're mm-hmm. talking to them the whole way. Hey, I don't want you to rob this bank. Yeah. But you're involved in that. You're being in that vehicle, or even driving the getaway car. Right. It's hearty agreement to that. Right, right. So right. It, it, they are an accessory to that. Now, yeah. of course, words do mean something. And with mm-hmm. our language and with the tone that we use and the way that we speak, we're not just out there on the sidewalk lambasting everyone. Right. You're all a bunch of wicked accessories to murder. When we're given a one-on-one opportunity, we use those words, and we want the conviction of the Holy Spirit to come, because ultimately, I mean, you can yell as loud as you want. You can use all the words you want. Ultimately, if the Holy Spirit doesn't convict them, there's no change going to take place. So we're trusting in the Lord, and we're trusting in God's timing, and we're trusting in God's ability to reach their hearts. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we do need to be truthful with our language. We do need to be... You know, calculated with the language that we use so that right. people don't let themselves, because people will use language in their own minds to let themselves off the hook. Right. We, we can't do that. Yeah, and they do it with the word fetus. For There's many, many words for baby. Fetus is one that's, that's kind of funny in a way because fetus just means little one. It's yeah. Latin for little one. It it's not like it's saying in some way fetus is not baby. Right, yeah. But it, it makes them feel better because you're not saying baby. But one of my least favorite, well, I have two least favorite. One is gestation. Mm-hmm. Calling the baby a gestation. Yeah. 
That to me, I don't know. That one bothers me yeah, a lot. Yeah. And the second one that bothers me a lot that you hear in the abortion industry is product of conception. Right, yeah, the product of conception. Let's have a product of conception party yeah. for, for the, the <laughs> pregnant mom. product of conception mom. shower. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. A <laughs> product of, of conception shower. You know, th- these moms, when they find out they're pregnant, you moms who are excited about their babies, right. don't put out there, hey, have a product of conception. <laughs> it might be a gr- girl or boy. <laughs> right. What do you right. think? We're going to have a yeah. gender reveal for my product <laughs> for of my conception. For my little gestation, my yeah. little product of conception. Well, the, yeah. the, the word I hate, yeah. and which I mentioned earlier, is pregnancy. Yeah. Your pregnancy. We're gonna, we're gonna take care. We're gonna remove your pregnancy. No, yeah. you're not. That's it's not a pregnancy. Right. It's a baby. In any other scenario, yeah. And I've said this to to aborting mothers. Yeah. In I- any other scenario, if you were excited about this baby, you wouldn't refer to it as a pregnancy. That's it doesn't right. matter how early you are. You would say, "I'm having a baby." Mm-hmm. You know, and you would the recognize moment, the from humanity. From the moment that you find out. Yeah. It's a baby. It's not like, well, this this is just a zygote or a blastocyte or whatever. You just don't say that. Yeah, no you one say says that. It, it's Unless a you're baby. trying to avoid certain realities, you're going to recognize it's a baby. When you see those two lines on that pregnancy test, you didn't think, oh, I'm carrying a pregnancy. I have right. a gestation. <laughs> you know, I've got yeah. a product of conception or a fetus. Right. No, I have a baby. Yeah. I'm a mother. Exactly. You know? And that kind of brings us, brings me to this other thought and in, in, in the words that we use when we're addressing the women going into the abortion center, right. we do say, young lady, please come over and talk with us. We, we call them a young lady. We're, we're, of course, kind and gentle in our tone. Mm-hmm. But we call them moms also. Yeah, we, we often say, Mama, call them moms. We say, Mom, you don't want to go in there and take the life of your baby. Yeah. Because that's the reality. Right. They are mothers. Yeah, exactly. And it's not like we're trying to just reduce them to mothers, which is something I've heard people yeah. say it is that we are pointing out this is they're there as a mother about to slaughter their child yeah. and the reminder you are a mother that alone can sometimes have value and power yeah you're a mother yeah because the truth is that she is a mother at the moment of conception yeah you know a mother is a female yeah <laughs> who has offspring yeah right yeah she has in her womb offspring. She yeah. has a child, yeah. her baby, her son yeah. or daughter. And that baby has gender. It's either a he or a she rather than an it. Yeah. So we're very conscious about using gender specific, he or she, your son or your yeah, daughter. Yeah. Rather than referring to the baby as as it. Right. You know, I hope, I'll share this testimony at some point. I won't get into any length. Maybe we'll have this young lady on. Okay. The young lady who I'd put a post out on Facebook and also put it out in our blog about the young lady who you know, I thought was actually going into abort after we had talked to her. And I said, please don't do this. And she turned around and said, um, I'm going in for a refund. So right. she got her money back. Right. She, I mean, yeah. awesome. The Lord just moved. She got yeah. on. She went on the mobile unit. After having been in the, in the abortion center, she went on the mobile unit, gave her life to the Lord. Her and her mother actually came back that next Friday wow. and gave, brought me a, a gift basket and a card yeah. just saying thank you for being a voice that was there. And her mother actually was talking about the baby, and she used the word it. She said, yeah, it, it's going to be such a blessing. And she said, wait a minute. I shouldn't say the word it. Oh, even she recognized. Even she recognized it. Wow. Even she recognized it. Wow. You know, sometimes in our regular common language, we might yeah. use the word it referring to the baby in the womb because we don't know whether it's a boy or a girl. But she right. even caught herself. She said, oh, I shouldn't refer to our baby as an right. it. You know, my grandchild right. is an it. That's my grandbaby. Yeah. And she was so yeah. excited. It's an yeah. awesome story. Yeah. And another word that we use a lot is blessing. Mm-hmm. And that's the positive what a child is. They are a yeah. blessing. And, and throughout the Bible, every child is described as a blessing. Yeah. But the the negative, the words that are used in the abortion industry and from the mothers themselves is that this is a problem. Right. Yeah. Or a difficult situation <laughs> or condition. Yeah. And sometimes just shifting the focus is not a negative one. It doesn't need to be a negative one. Yeah. And that, that baby is a blessing. So one of the things that I did that was really, I think, illuminating is going to the website of the abortion center. Okay. And uh, and looking at some of the the, the abortion that center they write. here on the trail. The abortion center here okay. in Charlotte, right? So the, there's so many, and I won't hit every one of them, but 
one of the lines said, we believe every woman should have control of her life and her personal decisions. So I'm reading that, and that sounds wonderful, doesn't sure. it? You yeah. know, you should have control of your life and your personal yeah. decision. But this is what they mean, that they're not saying what they truly mean is every mother should be able to murder their own child without anyone else telling her it is wicked, evil, unnatural, or wrong. Yeah. That Now, if they wrote that, if they <laughs> I, wrote that. I doubt that, that would be very re- well received by their clientele. Probably not. <laughs> it probably would l- lower the rates. Um at which they were able to make money off of killing children. Private appointment. Uh-huh. Private appointment. That sounds good. That That's a private yeah, they, appointment. they offer a private appointment. A pri- so you're what, not- what that is, in actuality, is a scheduled time when mothers would be able to get away with murdering their unborn child with the utmost secrecy for an increased cost. Yeah. But it's called a private appointment, which sounds very, yeah. you know, wonderful. It does. So... And and there's so much we we won't get into all of them, but they they it's called reproductive health care instead of the brutal murder of, yeah. of an unborn baby. They have counselors there who are said to be sincere, caring women who are committed to helping each individual patient complete their treatment. Treatment. Yeah. Okay, treatment. What is treatment? I mean, treatment, you you think, okay, if you're having a treatment, then you have a condition. Of course, this plays right into the whole thing. Pregnancy is a condition as far as these people are concerned. Yeah. But, yeah, so it sounds like treating a condition. It sounds like dealing with a condition. And this treatment is not the brutal murder of an unborn baby. This is, uh, you know, it's a treatment. Yeah, it's the termination of a pregnancy. It's the removal of the product of conception. And and get this, this kills me. Helping to complete their treatment with the best possible emotional, physical, and spiritual outcome. Wow. That's on the Abortion Center website that this treatment, the killing of an unborn child created by God in his image, that treatment will be carefully completed for the best optimal spiritual outcome yeah which is blasphemy blasphemy (laughs) and baloney yeah i mean goodness abortion as far as spiritually concerned destroys women yeah i mean we know we've heard the testimonies we've seen people coming out of that abortion clinic just spiritually emotionally physically distraught yeah this is not i mean abortion is a spiritual thing just like sacrificing a goat to the de- devil is a spiritual thing, right. right? I mean, this is, yeah. it's a satanic thing. It's, yeah. it's the destruction of an unborn child, an image yeah. bearer of Almighty God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and so yeah. that gets into some of the terminology as far as the Scripture is concerned. Mm-hmm. When we look at scripturally, what the Bible describes the unborn child as, you know, we have terms like in Psalm 139, you knit me together mm-hmm. in my mother's womb. Right. I mean, what, what what's the implications of those words when you think about right. being knit together? Yeah, together? yeah. There's purposeful design and care and intricacy. Yeah, yeah. Intricacy, purpose, mm-hmm. uh, even destiny, mm-hmm. love. Yeah, love, care, fearfully and wonderfully made is in that same. Oh yeah. Psalm, right? So then you have terms like yeah, fearfully, wonderfully made, wonderful. You know, it goes on to say in that psalm, and I love I love preaching about that psalm because yeah. there's so many good words in mm-hmm. there, the mm-hmm. best words. Yeah. Marvelous are your works. Yeah. And that yeah. my soul knows very well. That word yeah. marvelous. Yeah. It, it, when I think of it, I think of the Grand Canyon. I think mm-hmm. of the God's creation. I think of looking at an ultrasound image of a baby in the womb and, and, and marveling, marveling at the handiwork yeah. of God. Yeah. Your mouth drops open. Mm-hmm. You're, you're astounded, mm-hmm. right? And that's the words that the Scripture uses concerning the child. The, the abortion industry uses words like you know, product of conception mm-hmm. and treatment right. and condition, like pregnancy is a condition. Yeah. But the Word of God uses yeah. these rich, powerful life-filled words, right, like right. wonderful, like yeah. marvelous, like knit. Another yeah. word in that psalm, in Psalm 139, is uh, you covered me. You ever, mm. you ever thought about that word? Mm. You covered, covered me in my mother's womb. You know, a couple of years ago, I was meditating on that psalm, and just meditating on what does that mean? You covered me in my mother's womb. 
And it really means, it, it speaks of the involvement of God. Mm-hmm. So David is the psalmist there, mm-hmm. and he's talking about how God, you know, he starts the psalm saying, God, you know when I sit down and when I rise up, you know my thoughts from afar, you know all my days before even one of them came to pass. Mm-hmm. And so he's talking about how God knows him and loves him and has plans for him. And then he takes it, of course, from just being outside the womb, being on the earth, he's talking about being inside the womb. He said, you right. covered me. It means you were involved, you were concerned. You protected. Yeah, you, you yeah. cover me now, but you covered yeah. me. While I was in my mother's Way womb. back then. Yeah. In the moment of conception. So, you know, scripturally, words mean something. Yeah. Words like what we talked about earlier about fornication and, mm-hmm. and repentance. Mm-hmm. And, of course, those are, you know, I don't want to say negative words. They're, they're meant to bring about negative connotations and ultimately yeah. positive change. Right. But then again, you have these life-giving words. Right. You, know, you have the word like gift. You yeah. know, children are a gift. Children, Psalm one thirty or one uh, twenty seven. Children are a heritage yeah. from the Lord. Blessed is he whose quiver is full. So a yeah. quiver full is is presented as a joy. Where how many people with large families find that people uh, chastise them? Oh yeah, yeah. I know my wife has come to me and just been I don't know offended probably not the right word but distraught like, whatever yeah, she's like yeah. she, you know I was at the store and everybody's looking at me I had all the kids with me she don't normally take all the kids to the store yeah, but yeah. we have eight kids by the way for those yeah, who are listening right and uh so she's walking through the store and she's she's you know all these people are looking at her you know oh, she's even had people ask them and if any of you guys are listening that have large families you've probably been asked yeah. this are all these kids yours <laughs> you know are they all from the same dad? and you poor thing or I mean, whatever yeah you yeah. poor thing bless your heart yeah yeah and, and one person even asked her actually a couple of people have asked her are they all from the same father <laughs> oh my. i was like okay words mean something and you need to put those words back in your mouth that's ridiculous but i encouraged her one time i said you know what imagine everybody's looking at you funny or whatever imagine you're walking through the store and you've got a cart full of money and everybody's <laughs> looking at you funny, and they're looking at you strange because you're pushing a cart full of money. And they all want it. <laughs> and, well, they may be looking at you funny because they think you're flaunting your money or whatever. Who knows why they're looking at you funny? Right. But are you really going to care? Right. you got a cart full of money, <laughs> right. right? Well, according to the Word of God and the Word that God uses, children are a blessing or a heritage from the Lord. Right. When you're pushing a cart full of kids to the store, yeah. you're pushing more than a cart full of money. Yeah. You're pushing a yeah. cart full of blessing. Yeah. So, you know, again, God's Word affirms certain truths that we need to grab a hold of. Right. And and words do mean something. Yeah, the words and as, that we use. Really, and as the as the language goes, I heard this I think from Albert Moeller just a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. As the language goes, thus goes the culture. Yeah. And so you think about expanding beyond the pro pro life, but just things like the word gay to describe homosexuality. There's a, there's a very different Picture when you hear the word gay. First, right. when it first came out, it, it gay is happy, joyful, whatever. And, and it was a way to, to make homosexuality very unaccepted back then when it first came out. Yeah. And, and to change how people would look at that. And, and that's what's happening big time in the abortion industry yeah. is the words are being used to make our culture believe that this is an innocuous and even a good yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's a sad reality. So, guys, we want to encourage you. You know, again, words mean something. Words have value to them. We need to be Mm -hmm. intentional about the words that we use. We don't, of course, need to be nasty when we're communicating with people. But we do need to be clear, as articulate as possible. We need to be biblical, you Mm -hmm. know, when we're using terminology. Now, it doesn't mean we need to be, like, super lofty in our speech. But if we do use, and I think we should use biblical language, yeah, like I mentioned the example of using the word fornication, mm-hmm. and then explain those words. Explain yeah. what those words mean, the word repentance, and then explain mm-hmm. what that word mm-hmm. means. So as we're standing for life, as we're standing for truth, let's also contend for the words that we use. Yeah, Contend for the truths that are embodied in those words, mm-hmm. and ask the Lord, obviously, to help us. When you're reaching out at an abortion clinic, you've got 15 seconds, well, at least we do, in, yeah. in most scenarios. Yeah. From their car to the door, yeah. or when they're walking down the sidewalk. Every word counts. You've got, yeah, every you've word got matters. just a few seconds. Yeah. Every word counts. Yeah. Like you said, every word matters. Yeah. So we need to be intentional. 
<clears throat> which yeah. is you know part of part of what we do in our trainings and stuff like that. Right. Part of what we're doing on the Sidewalks for Life site is trying to teach people, yeah, how to speak, how to be effective. Mm-hmm. Some folks uh, have this mentality of at an abortion clinic we need to steer away from words like murder, right? Steer away from talking about God even. Mm-hmm. That's not what we found at all. No. We found that that your your best method is to be graciously forthright. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't need to beat around the bush. If a woman's mm-hmm. there for an abortion, ask her, are you here for an abortion? Mm-hmm. Don't talk about the weather. Don't mm-hmm. talk about the yeah, latest sporting event or whatever. You don't, have time. Whatever. You don't, you don't have, time. have time. That baby's on its way to destruction. Yeah. 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 And you've got to bring truth into the equation there, mm-hmm. right? And again, you do it graciously. Mm-hmm. You, I don't think it's effective. I, actually, I know it's not effective to just be yelling, abortion is murder the whole time. Right. But it is effective to bring that word into the equation. Yeah. Yeah. To talk about the fact that abortion is murder. Yeah. I think and certainly in the eyes of God. Yeah. I th- and I think doubt. talking about that word and breaking that word yeah. down when you have an opportunity mm-hmm. to an abortion minded woman is, is is a powerful way to show her the reality of what she's doing. Right. But we need the Lord's help, right? Yeah. God always Yeah. We need always. God's help to to help us to bring clarity in those situations. Mm-hmm. I hope this podcast has helped you guys a little bit with words. I hope this has been a blessing. I hope all the podcasts are a blessing to you. Let us know. Let us know that this podcast was a blessing to you. Let us know if you have ideas for future podcasts. We're going to do one in the next couple of weeks about adoption. Yeah, that will be awesome. Yeah, and talking about Mm -hmm. adoption. I get, I mean, in the past month, we've gotten messages through Facebook, through our public Facebook page about, you know, my family, we really want to adopt. Is there any chance you can connect us with an abortion-minded mom at the abortion center that we can adopt her child? Yeah, I've personally gotten to also. Yeah, I've gotten a bunch. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how we mention adoption at the abortion centers and when it's appropriate and when it's not appropriate. You know, listen, guys, there are some inappropriate times to mention adoption. There are yep. some times that a, adoption can be a non-starter in a yeah, conversation. Right. It, can it can even be the deal wall. breaker. It can oh, be yeah. what sends them running into yeah, the Yeah, I've had conversations center. stop right in their right. tracks yep. when I mention the word adoption yep. and a woman going to the abortion mm-hmm. center who would otherwise continue to engage. So anyway, right. we're going to talk about that in the coming weeks with Jessica Mullen. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to pin her down. She's with Option Adoption, but Um, We hope you guys are blessed by this podcast. Please share it. And until next time, God bless. Give me an outlet for love. Give me an outlet for gratitude. I know it will cost me my life. Nothing's too precious since I met you